everybody, very kind. <laughs> Lewis, Steve. I am remiss. I am remiss, and I hope you will forgive me, is that we've had a wonderful keyboardist sitting in all week. I have not asked you about this young lady. Please tell us who, who we're lucky <laughs> enough to have joining us this week. Oh, my gosh. We've got the incredible Danae Greenfield joining us Danae, on the Danae, thank you so much. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Um, and, Louis, you know who else is joining us? Find another musician, Bono, Ooh. is going to be out here. I've heard of him. Uh, He's pretty good, that guy. Yeah. Yeah. He's got a new book called uh, Surrender. It's his, it's his memoir. Oh, yeah. 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 But uh, before we go any further tonight, I have a massive announcement that I want to make on Monday. Because that's when, as is traditional every year, The Late Show will be announcing people's sexiest man alive for 2022. You may remember the last year we revealed that people's sexiest man alive was Paul Rudd. But this year, it's somebody else. Apparently, Mr. Rudd is either no longer alive or even worse, no longer sexy. <laughs> So, everybody watching right now, set your alarms, program your rooster, and make sure you tune in this Monday night on The Late Show where we will be the first ones to break this exclusive sexy news. It is so secretive that even I don't know who it is. But I am betting on a certain tall, muscular, bald superstar who is a household name. That's right, Mr. Clean. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There you go. He's still got it. Is that a giant, shiny head, or are you just happy to see me? <laughs> now, uh, in other news, uh, I've had a bit of a weird day. I woke up this morning and found out I was trending on Twitter. That's rarely good news. So <laughs> I clicked on my own name, and there was a whole bunch of different posts, as usual. There were some uh, things that Elizabeth Warren said on the show last night. There were some things I've said about how important it is to vote. One person wanted to see my feet. But some people, <laughs> some people out there online had a bone to pick with me. And here's the thing. I don't make many mistakes that I'm willing to admit. But when I do, I'm big enough to admit them. You see, last Wednesday, I was talking about Michigan GOP nominee for governor and star of the movie Smile, Tudor Dixon. <laughs> As one of the centerpieces of her campaign, uh, Dixon has called for banning books from school and libraries, uh, especially LGBTQ books. And during a debate, she told a story that, frankly, I doubted. <laughs> Dixon's not the only one worried about this issue. So is this guy she totally made up. I had a gentleman come up to me just a few nights ago, and he said, I found content in my school library describing how to have sex to my son. I went to the Democrats, and I said, I cannot believe that this is in there. OK. <laughs> Fine. That happened. But <laughs> even if it did, if someone found a book they didn't like at a school library, why would they go to the Democrats? That's like saying, excuse me, is this Chuck Schumer's office? I didn't like the finale of House of the Dragon. Also, this natural peanut butter is way too oily when it's in the cupboard, but it gets too hard when it's in the fridge. I'm voting Republican. Good day, sir. I said good day. <laughs> well, it turns out the Detroit Free Press talked to this guy, and he's real. So I'd like to issue a rare correction. This... This very real person deserves an apology because, he says, to claim that I'm not here, I don't exist, I'm not human, that's absolute <laughs> ignorance. So I would like to apologize. It is a terrible thing for someone to deny your very existence. Just ask trans people. So, I, Stephen Colbert... <laughs> therefore... I, Stephen Colbert, acknowledge that you exist and ask that you forgive me. He goes on to say, if this person, and he means me, did his due diligence and started researching or had his team do a little bit of research of who's this person who attended Dixon's rally, they will be able to find my name right away, easy, on social media. Just Google it. Okay, fair enough. But I will point out that Dixon never said your name. So what am I supposed to search for? All she said was, I had a gentleman come up to me and he said, I found content in my school library describing how to have sex to my son. <laughs> he says that should be enough. So let's, uh, let's Google some key words from that sentence. Um, uh. <sighs> J. 
gentlemen, sex, come. Oh, my. You, you do exist, and you look like you're living your best life. Good for you. And delete search history. Now, none... Here, 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 here's another thing. None of the articles are really clear about what books he was upset about, but at a local school board meeting uh, thereabouts, there were several books objected to, including The Lovely Bones by Alice Siebold, Push by Sapphire, and All Boys Aren't Blue by George M. Johnson, which are pretty mainstream books. In fact, they were all turned into movies. The Lovely Bones was called The Lovely Bones, Push was called Precious, and I'm pretty sure All Boys Aren't Blue was called The Smurfs. <laughs> regardless, regardless, my friends, regardless, it, it, it could have been some other book. And I'm a parent, and I believe that every parent has the right to be aware of what their kids see and read. Just like everyone learning about this story has the right to know that as recently as October, last month, this guy claimed to be a Democratic politician, but switched after he lost his primary and packed up his toys and went off in a huff to support an election-denying, transphobic, COVID-19 conspiracy theorist. What a wonderful example for all of our children. <laughs> by the way... <laughs> by the way, fella, if you didn't know that about Tudor Dixon before you supported her, you should Google it. We'll be right...